Check this out. I'm building this giveaway 308 AR-10 and at I don't know how many points I run into supposed AR-10 specific parts or AR-15, AR-10 compatible parts that I really wanted to use only to find them unusable. Luckily for me, I get to put these things back on the shelf, but damn, it sure seems that for anybody else out there, you either have to spend hours searching for somebody who has already tried or spend a ton of wasted time and money learning the old trial and error way. That's a problem and we hope to fix it. So let's talk for reals about AR-10s. Hey guys, it's Randy here with AT3Tactical.com slapping you in the face today with some 308 AR-10 information. Hot and heavy, fast and furious. This episode number one, uh, it's all about what is an AR-10? What are their mission sets? What are their capabilities as tools? What's their purpose beyond also being the way more fun big brother to your AR-15 range toy? And most importantly, what the hell fits with what? Okay, so the very first problem we run into is using the blanket nomenclature AR-10 to describe a firearm platform that could potentially range across 40 different cartridges, like 220 Swift up to 500 Phantom or maybe 510 uh, WSM, Winchester Short Mag. Mind you, 80% of those calibers do not apply to you or me or anyone without very special specialized missions for their AR-10s. So for the sake of ditching the extra fluff here, what makes up that other 20% of cartridges and breaking that down even further, out of those handful, how do you pick the one that will lend itself to your specific mission success? Hunting, maybe bigger scale varmint management, thousand plus uh, yarders you guys are out there. And you know, hey, there's no shame in just having a, again, a big brother range toy for your AR-15. That said, for the rest of this series, we'll pretty much be focused on the most popular AR-10 cartridges across the board. Cartridges like your NATO 7.62x51. It's a descendant from the trusty old 30-06 cartridge in the M1 Garand. Uh, your 308 Winchester. Think about that civilian 223 Winchester uh, versus the NATO 556, um, but bigger. Uh, you've also got great granddad's tried and true medium game load, the 243 Winchester. Uh, and to cut this list short, probably stir up some emotions in a few of you. Finally, the 65 Creedmoor. Slower velocity, higher precision reliability at distance. Granted, do not be surprised if we bring up some cartridges that are gaining popularity and traction like your 338 Federals, your 358 Winchesters. Guys, you'll hear me say it over and over throughout the series. First step, know what you want your AR-10 to do. Maybe one of those most common missions I mentioned earlier probably perked your ears, but at least you'll have a starting point for you know the entire rest of your rifle. Everywhere across the way in between, we'll help you walk through it. All right, quick little two cent history lesson about our beloved AR-10. Uh, we use that AR-10 term pretty loosely these days because there were runs of the Armalite 10 design, maybe not in the same form that you would think uh, of today's 308 style AR-10s, but you get it. Again, the short story for the US military adoption came from the success and enhancement of that M1 Garand 30-06 round long way of getting into the uh, 7.62 by 51 that we find today. As for building one from scratch today, it's all about that brand, baby. <laughs> uh, if you want no questions asked, reliable parts, compatibility, fitment, uh, do not deviate from your brand. Uh, accessories are one thing, but mission critical components uh, for your AR-10, like the barrel, like the BCG, like the buffer assembly, gas system, uppers, lowers, handguards, Actually, even down to some granular things like uh, magazine catches, little parts kits, pivot pay takedown pins. The chances are likely higher that they don't fit. So the ultimate question is then, how do you ID the parts and brands that are cross compatible? Let's start with some of the big names in the quote AR-10 platforms. You have Armalite AR-10, DPMS LR-308, Knight's Armament SR-25. Dare we honorably mention the DPMS G2? 
yes, there are others out there, but do a search on any uh, parts and accessories website like ours. These are the ones you'll see showing up time and time again. Okay, starting with your Armalite AR-10, legitimately the only AR-10 on the market because that's where the term started from. Back in the day, these were not fully cross-compatible Armalite AR-10s, which is why uh, there is still a ton of dated but still regurgitated information out there, specifically around magazine fitment. Guys, this conversation, it's got to come to a close. It's a thing of the past. Unless you're holding on to some old style Armalite rifles, most often you can ID them by the lack of an angle here on your magwell, uh, chances are uh, that you're going to have a hard time finding specific parts for true Armalite AR-10s. That might apply to magazines in this situation, however, probably not a safe bet to make in terms of mission critical components and cross compatibility between the brands. We all know how great mil spec and commercial parts play together with your AR-15. It's not so well with your AR-10. Next up, we got your DPMS LR308. It's pretty much the closest thing to an AR-10 standard that we have today. Likely the largest pool of manufacturers, brands, parts will be labeled as DPMS LR308, 308, even AR-10 LR308. It's confusing, I know. Uh, to make it even better, since we don't have more universal terms, you'll probably see a whole lot of manufacturers mixing and matching these combinations of these terms. Similar with Knight's Armament SR25, standardized to fit today's 308 AR-10 magazine well or magazine, but not necessarily the other body parts. And I'll do my best to call all of these differences out specifically as we continue throughout the series. Um, oh, and watch out for DPMS G2 parts. Uh, it was an attempt, you know, for an AR-15 size and weight AR-10, uh, but the, at the cost of everything being pretty much proprietary, meaning it doesn't play well with others. Do not stop reading when you see DPMS for this reason. Uh, probably not a whole hell of a lot of them out there, but enough to pay attention to. Here's the deal though, as we progress through these mission critical components over the next few episodes, Again, I'll make damn sure I call out any glaring fitment issues for those specific parts respectively. As for today, start prepping your mind for brand affinity or brand loyalty when it comes to your AR-10 parts and choices. As you'll see, it's the fastest path to a build without a, a lot more swearing and headaches. Like our giveaway prize at the end of this series, this primarily Aero Precision M5 AR-10, I guess you could call her the gray ghost with a mild case of elephantitis, but don't look that up, guys. But yes, after we get this little long-range tack driver all built, added some sweet optics and accessories, dialed it in on the range, uh, it's headed home with one of you guys. Yeah, we're probably looking at something nearing like the 2K mark when all said and done, but if you haven't entered yet, there's a link below and on the top of the comments. It'll take you to the promised land. Don't sleep on this one, guys. Uh, and, and don't worry, if you're living in one of those oppressed states of the union, you know who you are, we'll get you sorted out. Uh, only three or four more episodes left on this AR-10 bad boy series, guys, so get in when you can. Let's hit on that AR-15, AR-10 interchangeability real quick while we're on this topic. What parts can you use and which ones are no-gos? Uh, again, don't need to dissect every last brand or part for fitment, but uh, think of it as generally, uh, as generically as possible. One, there will never be full compatibility. Guys, there's one area in life where size matters, and in this case, it does determine what you can and not swap out with your AR-10 and AR-15. Number two, this is mostly an accessory game. Uh, okay, it's really actually just an accessory game, but it's a game that you're already winning with your AR-15 because you've dialed in your favorite choices for little things like stocks and pistol grips and triggers and safety selectors. And of course, all the M-lock and Picatinny crap your heart, little heart desires. So I will tell you firsthand, some accessories, even if advertised by the manufacturer to be AR-15 and AR-10 ready, I'm looking at you, some of uh, those heavier butt stocks, but uh, even a little rubber mallet persuasion wouldn't help. 
All right, so after you've sorta drilled down your AR-10 mission, you have a pretty good idea of how to wade through the sea of AR-10 acronyms, model numbers, whatnot. Uh, where do you start then for your AR-10? I have to tell you, it's just like our Ultimate AR-15 series. It all starts with your barrel. Barrel, caliber, bores, all of that good jazz. We talk about it right over here next. It is AR-10 episode two, barrel lengths, weights, chambering, twist rates. How can you expect them to perform when narrowing down the choices to just a small handful? We'll see you over there. 